Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, <clears throat> episode four of my pencil drawing tutorials. Well, it's eventually going to be painting tutorials, too. This is pencil drawing mainly uh, to start, and uh, I decided to do a special edition for you guys. Uh, we've learned all of the very basics, so you can actually start creating finished works of art now uh, using the tutorials I've given you. As you can see, I am starting my drawing with basic shapes, circles, squares, triangles, I'm, I'm, I'm just, just sketching them all in really light. Uh, you see, I am increasing the basic shapes. I'm hinting at other shapes. You see the little inside lines you draw inside the basic shapes hint that there's another shape there. Uh, even if you're not drawing out the actual oval for the cheekbone, you can hint at it with an inside line. You never want to. You never want a complete line inside the object unless it's completely blocking off the view of the object behind it. Uh, but basically, we've learned we've learned perspective. And as this critter goes in the background, you'll see the, the thing start to shrink away. Uh, we used the basic shape tutorial. I uh, made this all, out of all basic shapes. Uh, and there's going to be a dark outline around the outside, of course, when it's done. And, uh, and I'm going to shade it. I'm going to use our shading techniques, cast shadow, uh, gradient shadow, highlight, uh, reflective, re reflective high, yeah, reflective shadow, and deepest shadow. The shadows are not going to be very dark, like I said on the sh shading tutorial. The reason I did it so dark in the shading tutorial was to emphasize the different grades of shade. As you can see, I'm going back in and uh, darkening in my basic shapes, uh, ignoring the guidelines, uh, but uh, paying attention to the main part of the basic of the basic shape that I needed. For instance, uh, uh, on the ear there, you know, I, I I ignored the bottom of the triangle. You can still kind of see the line where I I drew the bottom of the triangle. But I didn't darken it in because it's not going to be part of the finished sketch. It was just there to help me out. When you're drawing a fantasy creature, uh, you know, obviously the legs and arms and stuff they're they're not set in stone. You 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 don't have a you don't have a, a basis for them because you're drawing them out of your own head. In this case, uh, the forearms I went with uh, a really thick, really stubby. Uh, human forearm that's the basic shape of a human forearm and with back end I went with uh, some kind of like a dog leg which uh, uh, I can teach in a later tutorial uh, how to do a dog leg but basically it's uh, its knee is higher up and its ankle is lifted I mean its heel of, uh, of the foot is lifted off the ground as an extra joint but, but as you look, you can see all of the basic shapes in this. I mean, they're all little circles, little squares, little triangles, uh, diamonds. They're all ba very basic shapes. You put them together and you use, the, uh, use a dark outline around the solid objects. And you use a, uh, a uh, lighter outline around the, uh, around the depth lines. That's what I'm going to call them. The, the, the little inner lines, like the cheekbone there, uh, you don't want to connect that all the way because the, that, that's part of the skin. That is just that is just there to indicate that there's some depth there. And behind it, you know, there's, it, it's covering a little bit of space. If you drew it in completely, it would seem like a completely separate object. Now, as you notice, I, I go over my outline a lot of times. Uh, the reason I do this is because... The, cl the, the further things are in front, the darker the outline. So you start with a dark outline, and as you increase the dark outline around shapes in the background, you need to go back in to the foreground and darken those again. Uh, when I'm doing a drawing like this, the things that irritate me, I fix them last. A lot of times. I'll, I'll wait, I'll wait till I, I, I just can't stand it anymore. You focus on the things that are going good, and uh, as you like, like the shoulders there. Those are some nice bulky shoulders, and uh, you can even see the shoulder muscles right there on his back, just just bulking up. 
once again, there's no there's no tutorial. There's no there's no nothing to look at unless you want to draw someone else's dragon, which I don't. I like to draw my own critters, my own versions of my own critters. So uh, you got to add the muscles where you think they would fit. You got to add the shapes of the muscles where you think they would fit. Like I think you would have a strong neck muscle, and I think a critter that powerful would have really really strong you know upper back muscles uh i haven't really done a face tutorial either and a dragon's face the dragon's face there is kind of just an elongated human face but uh you can still figure it out from the basic shapes there, how to draw it, uh, at least in profile from the basic shapes we've done. Now, I should have done a scale shade, you know, some kind of a textured scale shade on this one, but uh, I was getting lazy towards the end and I decided to just go with my standard scribble shade. Uh, we haven't gotten to that part yet. I'm still darkening in the main lines of the drawing. And you see, uh, just use the eraser tool, clean out some of your guidelines, clean up your outlines. Wanted the tail to be a little thinner because, uh, you know, it's fading into the background. It's going towards the vanishing point, which I didn't draw in the vanishing point. Once again, uh, if you watch the vanishing point tutorial, you... You, you realize the vanishing point is not drawn on every drawing and this is one of the good reasons why you don't have a distinctive vanishing point drawn on every drawing because that's a curved tail so we're, we're still darkening the outline honestly the outline takes more time than the basic shapes uh, it, it takes more time than the shading actually because you, you, you want to make sure that things in the foreground feel like they're in the foreground because the, the the whole trick to art is making a two-dimensional object look three-dimensional you'll find when I do start shading I like to do the cast shadow first because that takes out a lot of effort it's a pain in the butt if you bothered to shade something and then later realized it was going to be in cast shadow now things can have a darker and a lighter in a cast shadow it's kind of a cheat though uh, and it's kind of a fun little cheat sometimes it makes a really interesting work of art when you, uh, just a, a, a basic one-tone cast shadow, a single-tone cast shadow, where, you know, the objects in the cast shadow don't have any other text, any other light, although in reality they would. It's just a stylistic choice, uh, and I believe in this one I actually even blur the cast shadow to make it stand out a little more. have darkened in the uh, uh, the guy the uh, uh, the depth lines on the interior uh, I don't do a lot more darkening on them it's mainly the outline itself the the, the main outline uh, because the main outline is what's what's creating a sense of depth uh, outside of your shading once you start shading that's gonna create some depth too oh oh am I starting the shading okay I am starting the shading I've chosen a light source kind of up and to the left, uh, coming down on the dragon. So uh, you notice, uh, uh, so most of that far side is going to be in cast shadow, with a few rare exceptions. Those eye bones stick up just enough to be out of the cast shadow a little bit, uh, and the ear there. I'm going to have to, uh, I fixed that cast shadow a little bit, but uh, adding in the cast shadow first once again. It makes it easier to shade the rest of it because you know what's in cast shadow and what's not. Uh, in fact, when I'm painting, I start with cast shadow. I paint my entire canvas black so that no matter what I paint, I already have the cast shadow there. You'll notice as I do the normal shading, like as I'm shading those stones there on his, on his forehead, I don't put the darkest part all the way at the edge of the line. 
see now I'm shading in the cheekbone. Uh, it's going to be darker farther away from the light source, of course. Uh, but never shade all the way to your outline because that kind of leaves an automatic reflective shadow. Whether there's something there to reflect it or not, it, it, it still looks good. Your, your reflective shadow is covered. You don't have to worry about it. And remember, places that are deeper, places that are, uh, that don't stick out quite as far are going to be darker. Uh, like there's a little depression just past the cheekbone, and that's why that's darker there. Light outline there, that's what, that's where my cast shadow is going to be. Uh, and same on the, same under the neck there. Uh, although I think I'm going to need a little more cast shadow than that, but, uh, I'll probably fix that later. But even there, notice the darkest point is not all the way to the cast shadow, the darkest point. I leave room for a reflective shadow there. Always leave room for your reflective shadow. Uh, and, and, and you'll, you, you'll shape, notice how as, as you add shading, your these, 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 these little guidelines are helping me. These little depth lines I left in there are helping me remember the shapes of the objects. Uh, see, so there's a little bicep shading it in because it, it's kind of inset a little bit, especially the way it's positioned with the light source. Uh, it never hurts to trace in a little bit of background as you're drawing your creature because you're going to want to know later on that, uh, you know, where your background's going to go. I honestly haven't drawn a whole lot since I started painting. So as I've started doing these tutorials again, I've started drawing again. So this is going to finish this up. Uh, check out my book on Amazon.com. I got it on paperback and on Kindle version. The Kindle version has a free sample if you have a Kindle. If you don't have a Kindle, the Kindle app is free for practically anything that connects to the Internet. Uh, I hope you like this. Thank you guys so much.